Welcome to another AP Chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in today's video, we're learning about another part of redox reactions. And this is one of the parts of redox reactions that some students find to be some of the, well, shall we say, the most unpleasant part of this, and that is balancing them. Because sometimes balancing redox reactions or redox equations can be pretty tough. For example, let's try this example on the board here. We have iron two ions are added to an acidic solution containing dichromate ions, producing iron three ions and chromium three ions. So that seems like a lot going on there. What you want to do first is write down the reactants. So we, it looks like we have uh, iron two ions being reacted to dichromate. So I'm, I'm going to write those down first. Those are the reactants. And the products are iron 3, someone that's obviously the product of, of the iron 2, and the chromium 3 is the product of the dichromate. We talked about that in the last video, how you need to know that. Well, now we're going to have to balance these. Now, the first one looks pretty easy to balance, doesn't it? We just need to put one electron over here on the right side, and that balances the first half reaction. So that seems to be a very simple oxidation. It's just losing an electron. But down here, there's all kinds of mess going on here, isn't there? Because we have oxygens on the left and there are no oxygens on the right. It looks like, you know, how are you going to balance this? Well, there's a very systematic step-by-step -step process that you want to go through uh, to balance these. Now, the first step is to balance everything other than hydrogens and oxygen. So you might notice that we have a chromium problem. We have two chromiums on the left and only one chromium on the right. So I'm going to put a two right there. So now the chromiums are balanced. Now the next step is to balance the oxygens. Now how do you balance the oxygens? We have seven on the left, but there are none on the right. Well, we balance the oxygens by adding water molecules to the opposite side. And we can do this because these, it, th these reactions are all taking place in aqueous solution. There's water present. And so we can make a pretty safe assumption that water is going to be involved in this in some way. So I have seven oxygens over here. So I'm going to add seven water molecules to the right side, just like this. Well, I've solved my oxygen problem, but you may notice I've just created a new one. I've created a hydrogen problem. I, have, I now have 14 hydrogens on the right side. And how do I solve those? Well, I balance the hydrogen atoms by adding H plus ions to the opposite side. So I'm going to add 18 H, uh, not 18, 14 H pluses to the left side, just like this. And I can do that because most of these redox reactions take place in acidified or acidic solutions. Now this, this problem here actually came right out and told us that. As you can see here, it says it's an acidic solution. So we can assume, in fact, we're not assuming, it's telling us that H plus is there. It's actually doing something. Okay. Well, now all our atoms are balanced. We have 14 hydrogens on both sides, 14 on the left, 14 on the right. We have seven oxygens on both sides, and we have two chromiums on both sides. So now we can balance the charge. So on the left side, and by the way, just so you know, this is where if, if students are, are, are gonna have trouble on this, this is where they have trouble, is balancing the charge. Because this is tough. You have to keep track of those pluses and your minuses. We have plus 14 right here, because there are 14 pluses, and there's a negative two. So on the left side, we have a positive 12. Sometimes it's nice to just keep write that down, keep track of it. On the right side, we have positive six. We have a plus three times two, so that's a plus six over here. So that means we need to add six electrons to the left side to make that balance out. So we balance the charge by adding electrons to the appropriate side. So the six electrons will go over here. Okay, so now we have two balanced half reactions. And if, if you look at this, you can say or see that the first one we're losing an electron, so that is an oxidation. And here we're gaining six electrons, so that is a reduction. Well, now we have to add the whole thing together and make one big overall redox reaction. So we're going to add them together. And as you can see, we cannot add them as they stand because we have six electrons on the left, 
only one electron over here on the right. So I'm going to have to multiply the first one by 6 in order to make this work. So 6 like that. And so now it's going to work. So when you add them together, we get 6 of the iron 2 ions plus 14 of the hydrogen ions plus a dichromate ion will give us 6 of the iron 3 ions. That's where that comes from there. We have 2 of the chromium 3 ions and 7 water molecules. Since I was running out of space, I did not put the, the uh, states on here. But everything that's charged should be aqueous. And of course, water is a liquid. Let's try another example of this. Let's try one where we have, sometimes the equation's written for us, so we'll have this. We have the chlorate ion being added to an iodine molecule, giving us a chloride ion and an iodate molecule. Well, what you want to do, first of all, is separate these into their half reactions. So I'm going to put uh, the chlorate and the, the chloride in one of them, because that's obviously a pair. And then the iodine going to iodate is another obvious pair here. So once again, we're going to go through the same steps that we did before. The first reaction, we'll balance that one first. Balance everything other than the hydrogens and oxygens. And fortunately, that's already done for us. We have one chlorine on both sides. Now we can balance the oxygens. We have three oxygens on the left. So we're going to balance that by adding, what do we add to the right side? water molecules. And how many? Three, because we need to get three oxygen. So three waters over here. Now we've solved the oxygen problem, but we've just created a hydrogen problem. So we have six hydrogens, and so we're going to have to add six hydrogen positives to the left side. We're assuming there, there, that there's acid here present, and that's probably from this, probably hydrochloric acid, I'd bet. So, or maybe uh, chloric acid or something like that. So now it's time to balance the charges. So we have six positive charges on the left for this and a negative one for that. So that's a positive five. I'm going to just write that down here. We have a positive five on the left side. And on the right side, we have negative one from that right there. So which side needs to be getting the electrons. Which side needs to be getting more negative? Well, it's the left side, isn't it? We need to add six electrons over to the left side to make them uh, even out with charge. So that's, that's the first one. Now, let's, let's try the second half reaction. Once again, the first step is to balance everything except for hydrogen and oxygen. So we do need to balance the, the iodines here. We have two over on the left side, but only one on the right side. So I'm going to balance the iodines like this. And now I can balance my oxygens. I've got six oxygens on the right side, you know, three times two. So I need to put six waters on the left side, like this. Now I need to balance out my hydrogens. I've got 12 hydrogens. And so I add 12 H pluses to the right side. And now I'm ready to balance the charge. The left side is zero, isn't it? Nothing is charged on the left side, so that's zero. On the right side, what's the total charge on the right side? Well, I've got a plus 12, you know, plus 1 times 12 is plus 12. And I have minus 2, because the minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. So plus 12 minus 2 is a positive 10. So a positive 10 over here, as opposed to the zero over on the other side, I need to add 10 electrons to the product side, don't I, to make it add up. So I'm going to put 10 electrons right here. And so now I have two balanced half reactions. I've gotten the hard part finished already. I just have to add them up. You know, this, this one over here, I gained electrons, so that is reduction. And over here, I lost electrons, so that is oxidation. Now I'm ready to add them up. I can't add them up the way they stand, though, can, can I? Because I've got 10 versus 6. I've got to have the same number of electrons. So it looks like if I can bump the number of electrons up to about 30, that's going to work. So if I, if I multiply the first one by 5, like this, and multiply the second one by 3, like this, now I can, I can get everything to add up. I want to notice that 15 of my waters will cancel out as well, leaving me three waters on the left side. 
And I've got hydrogens that'll cancel. 30 hydrogens will cancel on the left and the right, leaving me with six hydrogens on the right side. So this is my overall balanced equation. We have three water molecules plus five chlorate ions and three iodine molecules. That's a solid, by the way. We'll produce five chloride ions and six iodate ions and six hydrogen ions, okay? So that's a good example of a tough one, okay? Where you have a lot more going on, have to be very careful on your arithmetic there with the positives and negatives when you're adding up your charges. Let's do one more example. This time we're gonna do one that's in a basic solution. Now this is just like the last one, except there's one last little step at the end, okay? We're gonna take the cyanide ion plus a permanganate we're going to produce this CNO, this cyanate ion, plus manganese 4 oxide. And so, first thing you want to do is to separate these. Okay, so we have the cyanide in one of them, and the cyanate, and then the permanganate becomes manganese 4 oxide in the other one. So let's go through the steps just like we did before. In the first one here, everything other than Hydrogen and oxygen, that's balanced already. So let's balance our oxygens. And I want to balance that. I've got you know four oxygens on the left and two on the right. Don't multiply, because then you've messed up your manganese atoms. You want to add two waters to the right side. So just like this. Okay, that balances my oxygens now. I have hydrogen, so I have four hydrogens on the right side. So I want to add four H pluses over here. Okay, now I want to look at the charge. So I have a positive four for this, and that's a negative one, so that's a positive three on the left side. There's a charge of zero on the right side because nothing is charged. So a positive three versus zero, I wanna add three electrons over here to the left side to make that balance out. So now I have a balanced half reaction, and we're gaining electrons, so it looks like that is a reduction. Let's do the same thing for our second one here. Our C's and our N's are good. We do have one oxygen to balance, so I'm gonna add a water to the left side. And I've now added two hydrogens, so we'll add two H pluses over here. And so now I'm ready to balance out my charges. I have negative one over here, and looks like I have positive three. I'm sorry, I have a, a positive one, rather, uh, because I have plus two here and a minus one, so that is a positive one. So how do I balance that? If I have, <coughs> excuse me, if I have a negative one versus a positive one, how many electrons do I add and where? Well, I need two electrons on the right side, don't I, to make those uh, balance out. So we're gonna have the two electrons like this. So now I have some balanced, two balanced half reactions. And so let's try adding them together now. Uh, of course, like I said, this was the uh, reduction since we're gaining. This is losing electrons. That's oxidation. When you add them together, can these half reactions be added the way they stand? They can't because we have three oxygens versus two. So I need to multiply the top one by two, like that, and the bottom one by three to get six electrons being transferred. So when I add these together, uh, everything looks good. The electrons will cancel out. And I'm also going to balance or to cancel out, looks like six of my hydrogens on both sides. The six hydrogens over here are gonna cancel out with six of these hydrogens, bumping me down to two. And it looks like my water molecules will cancel. The three over here will cancel with three of those. Four minus three gets me down to one. And so here's my balanced equation. Okay, now we got a little problem. This is in basic solution. And if it's in basic solution, we can't have this hydrogen ion hanging around because in basic solutions, you don't have a whole lot of hydrogen ions. Okay, we learned way back under solutions that uh, hydrogen ions are in acidic solution. In basic solution, you have hydroxides. So if that's the case, we're going to have to somehow get rid of those of those hydrogens. Well, we're gonna add two hydroxides 
to, to, uh, excuse me, to the left side of this equation. So I'm going to add two hydroxides over here. Now, just like in algebra, if I add something to one side of the equation, I have to add it to the other side as well. So I'm going to have to add two hydroxides over here, to, basically doing the same thing. So now I can add these up. So you might recall that two hydrogen ions and two hydroxides will actually produce two water molecules, won't they? Okay. And we now can cancel this water molecule with one of those two water molecules, leaving us with just one water molecule. So when I add this up and write this a little bit more nicely, this is what it's going to look like. We have a water molecule and two of the permanganate ions and three cyanide ions will produce two manganese four oxides and three of these cyanates, those ions of course, and two hydroxide ions. If it's in basic solution, you want to have hydroxides in there, not hydrogens. I hope you learned something here in this video. This may not have been the most pleasant video to watch, um, but once again, balancing redox reactions might not be the most pleasant thing for most students to do. But with practice, it's like solving a puzzle, and it's not too bad. Just keep track of your charges. Get some more practice in. If you're uh, using my practice problems, you'll get lots of practice in with, with balancing these. If you learned something from my video, or it, even maybe in the slight, slightest uh, part of this enjoyed some of this, uh, please give me a thumbs up so that YouTube will share this video with other chemistry students as well. Because I want you to get a five. I want them to get a five. I want lots of people to learn chemistry the way that they should. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again in the future on my channel where we can learn some more chemistry together.